Hi, hey, gang. Hi, 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 hi. It's me, Super Tech. You might be saying to yourself, What's on your head? Is that a crystal? Well, used to be. Now it is a TR cable for your Johnson transmitter. Let me show you how to do it. Well, here's the situation. You're getting ready to hook up your Johnson transmitter, and you know that you're going to require a Dow key relay to change the antenna over from the transmitter to the receiver. To power that relay, you need to access the switched 120 volts that comes out of this little socket. Many of you have wrote in and said, hey, where do I find the proper plug that goes into that socket? Okay, well what this is, is simply a crystal socket. You see these in many of the old vintage radios, okay? Maybe at one time there was a plug that fit this, but tell you the truth, I've never seen one. But I can tell you one thing, you can take a crystal and plug it into that socket. You can take that crystal, plug it in the back of the radio. So there is your plug. I'm going to show you how to adapt this little crystal into the plug that you need to supply 120 volts to your Dow key relay. To perform this little task, you're going to need an HC6 style crystal that you don't care about, some 22 gauge hookup wire, and a little rubber grommet. And what we're going to end up doing is heating this crystal up, removing the cover. We're going to drill out the end, install the rubber grommet, your wiring will go through that grommet. I will remove the crystal element. We'll have post sticking up. We'll solder to it. Put it back together. And then you've got a cool little plug for the back of your transmitter. First step is to remove the cover off the crystal. You can do this with a standard soldering iron. You just got to get the heat to transfer around the case. It will take a little bit of time just be patient. Keep heating this cap and eventually it'll lift right off of the crystal. Hardest part of course is holding it still. But you're going to feed it with solder. Alright, I've moved around to the other side. She's getting close. There it is. So now this little crystal element you're not going to use. So clip him off of there. And I take a little bit of solder wick. Remove the little leads off these posts. And the nice thing is, when you're doing this, guys, since these are vintage crystals, the base is like an epoxy material. It's not going to melt. So don't be afraid of applying heat. Next step is to drill out the cap. I put a little center punch mark in these. And then I got this itty bitty center drill that I'd like to use. Okay, now we're going to have to open that up a ways further for the grommet to fit. So I've got a little stepper bit that I use. It's pretty handy. I would highly recommend that you leave this in a vise rather than getting your fingers in there. Alright, so you got a hole now. There's some burrs inside, okay? So you can take an X-Acto knife, get in there, and knock out those burrs. 
because you don't want those things to mangle the little rubber grommet because the grommet's going to be in there to protect the wires from burrs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, get those burrs out. Get her nice and cleaned up. Pop in the grommet. Yeah, she's a little tight. But we're dealing with 22 gauge wires. So they don't need a lot of room to make it in there. But you want this guy to be kind of tight, okay? There it is. It's installed. Right now, we're going to put our wiring through and we'll solder to the base of the old crystal socket. You can see we don't have a lot of lead here, right? So what I do is I'm simply going to put tiny hooks in my wires and I'm going to solder them on the inside because I want to keep my wiring away from the case of the crystal socket, right? Because that's metal. And as another added level of safety, I take a little bit of heat shrink tubing and I'm going to tuck it right inside of that cover. So after I solder this, I'm going to push this down, of course, and the solder is going to go back in this little rib. And at the same time, we're going to have this insulator that's kind of melting around these posts. So I always leave this a little bit long so that as it melts, it'll conform and insulate this case from the 120 volts. All right, so I'm letting the vise do the work for me. I trapped the wire in there and of course it's hooked and sitting right on that little itty bitty post. So you're just going to solder that guy on there. All right. Now this is uh, Teflon wiring guys. I would not recommend that you use cheap PVC jacket wire because the insulation will pull back and then you have more of an opportunity of a short to the case. Get the other post solder down here. All right, there they are. So this is why I put the wires with the insulation facing out, okay? So the Teflon wire if it happens to touch the case, won't short. If you flip that around the other way, your solder could hit the little case. Now, of course, you know, I wouldn't say just make this and plug it in and try it. You're going to want to buzz it out, right? Make sure you don't have any shorts. All right, now the next step, we need to just squeeze this guy back together. And we'll put him back in the vise, heat it up, push it down. We're almost done. So installation is the reverse of the removal of that little cap. But I use a little trick. You see this toothpick? I trap that underneath the middle of the base of the crystal so that when I apply pressure it doesn't try to sink into the rubber and of course the heat stays above the rubber and doesn't damage my vise. Alright, so same deal. I'm going to get some solder on the iron. Always got to fight camera angles here. I'm going to apply pressure on the crystal straight down. Like this. I'm going to get that solder flowing. And let that guy settle right back down into the base like it was originally. So I can see the solder moving. So I had to kill the camera so I can get more solder on this crystal base. Same deal. Just watch the solder on the base and you'll see it starting to move and then you'll feel the cap settle back down into that groove. 
You know, when you're done, it might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but it's going to be functional. Oh, yeah. Hear it? She just squeaked. Said, hey, I'm in. All right. Okay. Take a look. Whammo bammo. There she is, guys. So the next thing, of course, is take a little meter. Make sure that we didn't short to the case. See the meter. All right. And of course, if you short it, you get to take it all back apart. So, no, nope, no shorts to the case, and hopefully the leads didn't melt to each other. Nope. Good to go. So, here's test fit. Looky there. This lead will route over to the TR switch. Nice and secure, safe method. So if you find yourself in a pickle, catch up with D-Lab. We're always hot-dogging around the shop with tech tips. Tell your friends. Subscribe. We'll see ya.